You kind of mentioned earlier this idea of like a trash aesthetic, which I think is a very interesting thread in video games, and it's something I've been seeing. Obviously, there's a lot of experimental creators experimenting with all different types of aesthetics. We were talking to Sos Sosowski yesterday about his mosh pit simulator, which I think there is some commonality. Uh, this kind of... I think of it as like self-consciously 3D kind of look, you know, or like... 3D graphics as, or like maybe slightly earlier generation of 3D graphics right. as an aesthetic. It's really interesting because Unity look back in kind of Unity 2.x, 3.x was something that became so, everybody was so desperate to escape from that. And now that, uh, now that the, there's all these different lighting options and all these assets and everything, it's really easy to escape from Unity look. Now people are starting to kind of embrace it as a, as a kind of desired aesthetic. I think Sauce's game looks, uh, looks super good. But it's definitely old school Unity look, um, and yeah, I've talked to him a bunch about about trash aesthetic. He's definitely uh, sort of working in a similar kind of zone with Mosh Pit Simulator. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, they, the history of kind of trash core games goes back a little bit further than that. It doesn't go back to the 80s and 90s because there was no kind of internet to be drawing the kind of trash uh, stuff from. But when you get to the break breakout of uh, game maker games. Um, you start to see people uh, building asset packs for each other, ripping songs and sprites and stuff uh, from other games. So, uh, you know, this, this game that, that inspired me, Sexy Hiking, is uh, made of ripped sprites and, you know, music from, from uh, Nintendo games and the X-Files and, uh, and, you know, like, the, the, and, the, and tile sets and, and so on and so forth. And it's, it's like, it's a way of, um, it's, I suppose, as a... As a it's it's partly just practical. It's about working fast. It's not maybe uh, wanting to or knowing how to make those assets yourself. But it's also um, it's, in a, it's sort of a repudiation of AAA aesthetics of the days. We get so uh, we, we get so used to seeing the the graphical bar moving at a particular rate, and at any given time, we just know what a AAA game is supposed to look like. There might be sort of three or four popular aesthetics that are going around, and I I think when you work. It, with with sort of trash assets in a way, what you're able to do is say like like n I'm not doing that. I'm trying to differentiate myself from that. I, I reject uh, the quest for for fidelity and the quest for for kind of graphical quality above everything else. I'm interested in ideas. I want you to. F it tells the player as well. I want you to focus on uh, the experimental aspects of this or the the kind of the playful aspects of this. I don't want you to focus on the kind of like video gamey aspects, the, the sort of aspect that is like a, of, you know, games have this aspect that's like an engine for, for generating uh, fun play. Uh, and, and when you see a AAA game, you expect it to do those things for you, right? Now all these expectations get set. Even when you see like a really beautiful indie game like, uh, like Inside, you, you suddenly you're, you're filled with expectations for what it's gonna do for you. If you see a game that's made with, with like flipped assets or, or like, remaindered stuff from the dark ages of the internet, you know it's not trying to do that, right? You can instantly see that and you can come at it as a piece of art rather than as a, uh, as like a corporate product. Uh, you know, which is not to, to, to say ill of, of the, the AAA games and, you know, I think obviously things like Inside are, are beautiful, wonderful pieces of work. But I want to see just like a huge diversity of, of ideas and of styles and you have to do something to let the player know what you're trying to do. Yeah, I think that's super interesting, and I, I totally agree with that. I feel like it's almost a kind of a sort of a visual punk, you know, it's like a... Exactly, yeah. Punk is the, is the perfect touchstone for this kind of thing. Yeah, I've, and I, I really, and I appreciate that. And as someone who's kind of seen the visual evolution of the form, I find it really kind of fun and interesting to see this graphical moment kind of having that uh, sort of cultural significance right now. It's super cool. Right. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk briefly about was physics has been kind of a big uh, area of focus in a lot of your work. Um, maybe firstly, why? What, what drew you to that as a kind of a form of gameplay? And then maybe also if you have any advice to people who are interested in kind of pursuing that as well. Yeah, I was drawn to it, uh, I guess back in 2006, 2007, I was working on my cricket game which was the second game that I ever made. And I, I guess I, has, I just discovered uh, the website for Box2D, Aaron Caddo's physics engine, which is the basis of uh, the code basis of Unity's 2D physics engine now. 
but that was still very, very early days for, for Box 2D. And somebody had written a wrapper for Flash, which was the engine that I was working at the time. So it, for the first time, it became possible to very easily uh, make a, a physics game in, in Flash. And just, just being a very poor coder, especially at, at back then, a uh, very, very rookie coder, this opened up an opportunity to work uh, in a kind of expressive, creative way that wasn't open to me just in raw Flash, right? Because in Flash, not having kind of built-in physics or whatever uh, at the time, uh, you know, I had to explicitly code the movement of everything, and it was sort of asking me to draw on, on skills and resources that I, I just didn't particularly have. I had lots of design ideas, but implementation was difficult because I didn't have formal training in making games. Uh, so being able to drop uh, physics situations in it then becomes that you're defining rules uh, by editing your level. That's really what a physics engine does for you. And uh, that's, that's what drew me to it. Uh, you know, I, I, I really wanted to be able to, um, to, to just kind of try out variations in rules just by changing the objects and the joints and so on in, in, in the game. And I, I guess then I, after that, I made uh, Quop, uh, which is exactly that. It's like, well, what will happen if I create a, like a figure in the game and define his joints in such and such a way, well, it's, you know, he falls over. Uh, now, what if I wanted him to stand up? How can I approach like making, it, making him stand up? Well, I'll throw in some motors on these joints. This is all level editing, really. And uh, let's see how that works. Now, I'll give some button inputs to that. Giving button inputs to joints is the most trivial code imaginable. But, you know, there is a game that, that needs only a small handful of lines of code, and you've got the, the full game loop. And that was crucial to me to be able to do the sort of design thinking that I wanted to do and not get kind of stuck in learning to do implementation. And, you know, I, I think it just became um, a, a set of, of, of skills or a creative palette that I got to know very well over the years through making things like GURP and Pole Riders and CLOP and, uh, and then later uh, Super Pole Riders as part of Sports Friends. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I became more and more familiar with the affordances and uh, the kind of the, the, uh, the constraints that you have when you're working in physics. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a thing that I get well now. And I, I uh, so, so going into making Getting Over It, I was naturally gonna use a, a physics engine for that. Uh, I feel like I can make it do just about anything I want now, uh, but it took time to get there. It's not, it's not like uh, video game physics works like real world physics, not that much. There's a lot of uh, very subtle differences. So. Uh, it, it took time to be able to express myself that way. For folks who want to learn uh, more about you, your work, and getting over it, uh, where should they go? Uh, you visit my website uh, at foddy.net, uh, where there's a bunch of games and some writing as well. Uh, you hit me up on Twitter at BFOD, uh, and uh, I guess check out my GDC talks, many of which are uh, available for free on the internet. Awesome. Thanks so much.